Again, aloha nui kako from Hanapepe Kauai. I'm Malia Nobriga Oliveira, and on behalf of Hawaii Nui Akea, the School of Hawaiian Knowledge, we are so excited to be partnering again with Kanayo Kana, a Kula Hawaii network that um, really brings together Aina based organizations, schools, um, and just communities that are committed to Ike Hawaii, to our Hawaiian knowledge, to Olelo Hawaii, the Olelo of our people, of our Aina. Um, and really, our, our mission is um, raising Aloha Aina leaders. Um, so, this is definitely a part of, of that process and that leadership growing. And I see so many. Um, new friends, even from Aotearoa, that's joining us. Uh, and it says, Nā mihi o te ata mai te ika a Maui a Aotearoa. Kia ora, kia ora e hoa ma Aotearoa as well. So I will unmute Hailama and ask him to do a ho'olauna today. Aloha. Aloha. Wow, you know, it, it's such a privilege when you say, I will unmute Hailama. That too many folks fear of demise when you say you're going to unmute Hailama. Aloha nui loa kakoa paulo, aloha ho i kapo e i akoko ho mai ke i la a o kapo e ho aloha nui a mahalo i ka i ke i ka hui ana me kako nei i ke a launa ana o le anu e nui. Aloha, everyone, and thank you again for joining. Those of you who were here last week, mahalo. Those of you who are newly joining, I'm going to run through so quickly, so you're going to have to rewatch the slide or watch part one. Um, I did want to acknowledge, I received so many either emails or texts or contacts from folks asking either about their family names or, hey, I never shared this with you from my own family and beautiful mo'olelo and... Um, Boy, I, I mean, you know, it, it's, so, it's so important that we acknowledge our names as our most valuable possession, and we should loud them. We should carry them as we do our high Hawaii. Um, and I know that sometimes there are some personal you know that are very private, and that's okay too. But you need to know them and pass them on, um, and they tell stories. Um, I, you know, I wanted to address one thing I didn't address at the last uh, meeting. Folks always ask me, can I have a copy of your PowerPoint? And, you know, I'm very hesitant to, uh, to give it out, not because I don't like to share. Of course, I love to share. I'll come and share with your organizations. Um, you know, if you want me to, I'd be happy to. Um, I, I think what I worry about is some of the names that I share are personal to, to me or families who've shared the stories with me. So I wouldn't necessarily want someone else to carry on the stories unless they got it from those families firsthand. So that's what I want to explain that it's not myself being selfish. It's really about um, these are names that I've, you know, been given permission or I have kuleana that I am able to share because of my ohana. And um, you should find the same with your families and friends because, you know, there's, it's just so... It's so widely spread out there. Anyway, I want to start with that. But mahalo to all of you. Mahalo elea nui nui. Malia, thank you for this. Um, we are going to move quickly today uh, because I have part two and the final part. Otherwise, I could go on part three, four, five. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. So I'm going to go and share my uh, PowerPoint that I have. Great. As you're doing that, I'll just let remind everyone that if you have questions, um, or comments, feel free to use the chat feature. We also have the Q&A feature that's ready to go. Um, for those on Facebook, we're also monitoring the chat there. So if you have questions and you're on our Facebook Live, feel free to um, throw some questions or comments there as well. So, Maikai. All right, I see your um, screen. We've entitled, Ola, we've entitled the presentation Ola Kainoa. I've gone around many circuits sharing the presentation. I add a little bit to it each time or take some things away, depending on the appropriateness of time. <laughs> also, maybe there's someone in the audience that I wanted to address through something where they've, I've uh, been asked questions. So Ola Kainoa <clears throat> is an Ola no Eau. I kind of shared my own name, my legal name. 
I love my van ski hop, Ilani King Ichi Farden. There's my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, whose name is King Ichi. I told the story about my taking on that name. I spoke that in Hawaiian. We ask who, when we're asking Waiko, we know we're saying, who is your name? Not what is your name? Uh, it is your most valuable possession. There's no gender in traditional Hawaiian names. And you cannot just take a name because you like it. You should ask. I, talk, I will talk about the Oki of it. I said that for most of what I've learned about name giving, it comes from this beautiful woman, Auntie Napua Stevens. Just a beautiful, beautiful resource and um, uh, so much to share about Auntie Napua, which I did last week. Um, I gave some practices, started with ask, ask, ask. And that means um, ask your families, ask your uh, friends, you know, and just because I speak Hawaiian doesn't mean I necessarily know about some of the mores of name giving. So ask around. Um, I may not be the appropriate one you come to see. Um, and, and by the way, what I share with you is what I know. There are, other, I know other traditions out there and I don't want to discredit that at all. Um, be mindful of kauna. And that means if you name a child something, be careful. Auntie Napua said something to me about the use. And, and, and again, when I share this with you, it's what I've Learn so if your name is this, don't get insulted. It works for you, awesome. But she she would tell me if people had asked her about naming their child Kai by itself, with nothing added to it or or you know, then she worried that the child could be un, as unpredictable as the sea is. That someday the sea is calm, tranquil, tranquil, and someday the sea can actually cause harm. So that's, what I, that's a good example of what I mean by be careful, be mindful, just in case. And names are not puzzles. We've got to remember that. Don't just put it together. And generally speaking, using name, family names are safe. Your family names, not somebody else's family. But generally so, because sometimes families okay the name, and we'll talk about that together. And I, again, I end with ask, ask, ask. I hear the list of the you know, We started talking about some of them. You know, kupuna family names, ho'omana, all commemorative names, kuamom names. Sometimes um, with, they, they look like they have a negative meaning, but they're given to you to protect you from that negativity. Or their names to actually poke fun. And um, maybe we'll have a few more discussions on that. You know, ulaleo, the, the ones that voices call out to you, you hear, you literally hear the voice. You know, moi uhane, you know, po, dream names. Inoho Ailona commemorative names after some event. And then of course Ino Maki we'll talk about today. And that's probably unique to my presentation. Uh, we talked about Ino Kupuna passed down from another for, for, uh, person. We talked about Princess Bernice Mohi Bishop in Hawaii Elua. Uh, we talked about people naming under Ho'omanao. Like when Lilo and Stitch came out, they named the children Lilo. And I'd be careful because again, as unpredictable as the winds of a hurricane are. You know, um, you'd be careful not to name your child after a hurricane without a punny. And we can talk about punny together. So um, I spoke on this last week. If you missed it, watch the update uh, or the repost. Uh, Inoa Kua Muamu, I shared them. Um, negative possible names that offer an uh, opposite effect. You might be poking fun at someone. Um, and generally, ma'i names might be that. And I told you some stories there, and we look at our Ali'i names. Um, so today I wanted to start off with this aunt of mine. Her name was Annette Elsie Kahuki Ayalo Farden Ryan. Kahuki Ayalo. So before I do, uh, let's just sing together. You're all muted, so I know we're not going to all disturb, because I said we would. Um, I still have the morning throat, so it's really, you know, just enjoy if I go off key, which happens often. <clears throat> Kahuki Ayalo Kaleo Puamana Kahome Malahaina Kulana Hie Hie Uwe Kuini Ona Maka Maka Kuini Ona Maka Maka Kia 
So I would uh, be happy to sing it uh, more and um, other more verses or more songs, but it's because we have a short time. I'm going to move on. So I'm going to take us back a step. Oops, I pressed the wrong way. Kahuki Ayalo. This is my Auntie Annie. She was born in 1899. She was the second child of the Farden family. She was a nurse at Queen's Hospital starting in 1918. Uh, she was married to Thomas Ryan, and um, she had two sons. One passed away last year, and he was already in his 90s. So that gives you a perspective of time. Auntie Annie um, was born in Pu'ukoli'i, Lahaina, Maui. And her name, Kahuki Ayalo, was an Inua Kupuna. She was named after a previous Kahuki Ayalo. She was bothered by the name, so she asked, always asked folks, because uh, her mother never told her what the name meant. So because Auntie Napua was a very close friend of the family, she did ask, uh, and I believe it was through Auntie Ermgard, uh, for Auntie Napua to translate the name. Now, I'll stop there to say, people will come to me and say, can you translate my name, or can you tell me what this name means? I, wanna, I want you to know you'll see my probably body language be a little awkward. I might stumble. I might, pretend, I might look like I don't know what I'm talking about. And it's because it makes a person very uncomfortable to ask them, what does my name mean? But I also believe that it's my role as a name giver passed on from Auntie Napua to offer something to you. So if I offer something to you, I'm probably saying this is one interpretation. So don't go around and say, Hai Lama said, this is what it is, and that's it. So I'll offer you in the same idea how Auntie Napua offered to Auntie Annie. She said, one interpretation could mean that you are privileged to sit at the table of royalty. Now, there's a lot to dig into this trans, because she and I, Auntie Annie and I had conversation about that. She, she literally translated her name, and she accepted Auntie Napua's translation. And she said, I'm privileged to sit at the royal table. But to break it down, because it's my family name, I will do so for your, you know, for your information. Ka, of course, means the. Huki means to pool. Ai is food. And alo refers to the alo ali. So again, I did something that you don't do. You do not take names apart and go, here's the puzzle. I broke it apart. But I'm doing this for your own purpose as if I were a linguist uh, dissecting a, a Hawaiian language sentence or something like diagraphing a sentence. So... What this means is, if you were able to pull, I mean, honestly, my other family, my tutu was related this, to this kahuki ayalo. She said, literally, it means to pull the food from the chief. So, okay. But notice how Auntie Annie accepted the idea that I am privileged to sit at the royal table. And that's what I call that um, kauna meaning. So what might be connoted or instead of denoted? Denoted literally means to pull the food away from the face of the chief. The co connotation is more pleasant. It's just that I'm privileged. Why? Because if you, were, if you had the ability to take food from the presence of the chief, you must have had the privilege to sit in his or her presence. Otherwise, you'd be dead. You wouldn't even get close to grab his food. What I suspect, and this is a guess, is the first Kahuki Ayalo is either named after an event or actually did it herself. And that was to reach onto the plate of that person and pull food away. And it reminds me of a story when I was a child that I loved crispy gauji. And one of my few memories of my mother, very, very, very limited. I only have very limited memory of my mother because she died right just after I made four. I remember taking off of her plate gauji. And she said, son, ask. And I was so hurt. <laughs> and for years, I used to tell people, I felt that she died because I didn't ask, you know, as a child. Yeah? And it still will bring a little tear to my eyes thinking, you know, my love for my mother and, and that. So I think of a child reaching over and grabbing food from that alo ali. So I needed to share that with you. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on. And Malia, you can always guard if you have see questions because I cannot see 
the chat or anything like that. Yeah, Hikina, mahalo. You know, just a quick comment. Um, I, I mahalo you sharing that about when people are asking about translating a name because I've kind of been in those positions mm -hmm. too where people have asked and then I, I kind of start stumbling, you know, and uh, yeah. because I feel like it's something, yeah. And of course I know, and because some of them are family members and then they're like, well, but my my dad is not here anymore and it's a family name and grandma is not here too you know and i said okay well maybe let's sit down then and let's talk about it a little more it's not something like i can just like translate off the top of my head and you know it's like a longer process so i'm mahalo you sharing that because yeah um, as, as language teachers we always get asked that yeah no matter what and 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 we should feel safe to say let me share with you a because they want to know. That's why they ask us. Um, I haven't yet faced someone to say, well, that's not what I heard, you know, but um, I'm sure that could happen. Um, and just so you know, when I normally do the presentation, I, I do it with the graphics or the, you know, uh, uh, action and then moves, but I, I kind of reserved it. So it's just real plain here because I want to make sure that you all can see it. Um, so, you know, Ula Leo, these are these are names that might be proclaimed and you hear them. I, I'm sure all of you have had an experience where you have heard something that you swear somebody said something to you and yet no one's around you. And our kupuna believe, yeah, that's a kupuna reminding you. Uh, when I was a child, I would hear my name called by my grandmother. And, you know, after a while, I thought, okay, I go home. And they said, were you calling me? And my grandmother said, yeah, where were you? But I was far away at the park or at the beach. But I learned that when you get a ulaleo, be careful. Sometimes it's a warning to protect you. Now, that's another story. We're here about names that are inoa ulaleo. I find that I've received inoa ulaleo just as I'm waking up in that transition from moi to ala. So I am not sleeping, and it's not a dream. I hear a voice, and I will tell you as a shortcut, that voice 99.9% .9 of the time is a woman. And I tell you that woman is Antinapua's voice. There was only one time where I heard a male voice, and I don't know who that was. And um, I'll t I can't tell you about that more, but and I just jokingly say, sometimes hearing voice is not so bad because it's some wisdom coming to you. Some folks say, oh, that's my, that's the Holy Spirit in me coming out and sharing, Kiakua's spirit. So wherever that comes from, listen to it. Sometimes it's warning you. Sometimes it's giving you manau. And, and Kiahi, um, Auntie Napua's daughter, said, if you don't listen to it, it's going to be taken from you. She told me so clearly. My mother shared with you so many hours. She gave you so much knowledge. If you don't use that gift, she's going to take it away from you. I remember her telling me so blatantly, and as, as Kiahi was, you know, and I'm, I'm always happy that I had a very good relationship with her. Uh, she helped take care of my grandmother when my grandmother went to Luna Lilo for her last months of her life. Um, I have a name, Kaonohi Okala Olino Lino. I'll tell you a little bit about that after. Oops, going backwards. I pressed the wrong button. Ino Moi Uhane, also sometimes called Ino Po, because they happen in the Po. But please know, you can have dream names in a day as you daydream. Well, if you're daydreaming and you're not sleeping, then you probably, it's probably an ula leo, or it might be a whole ilona vision. But when you're sleeping and you're unconscious, I guess, to the world, those are ino moi uhane or ino po. Inspired by dream day or night, and they could be spoken in a dream or even a situation could be brought forward to you. And so I, I've had many examples of a dream where I saw something happen and then when I woke up, boom, the name came to me fast. And then I realized, oh, it was a reflection of that dream. Again, I will give you examples of these in just a bit. I'm covering the types right now. Inoa ho ailona. Here's an example of a inoa ho ailona. I have this pretty picture, and I, I wanted to show both sisters because both of these sisters are the last two living sisters at that time of Abigail Pililaau, one of the co-composers of the song, Aloha Iowai and I, and many beautiful songs like Neneu and others. The one who is sitting in the middle between my grandfather, you can see half of his body, and, and Auntie Mercy Garcia is Agnes Kumaeva Kupanaha Pililaau Kim. 
Kupanaha was a name given to her because there's a child. And you know, this is the mysteries of life. I sat and recorded her when I was 16 years old. The tape, I made three copies. All three copies disappeared. So it makes you wonder. <laughs> but that's enough to say. Anyway, Mrs. Kim, sweet lady, very strict. In her old age, I realized she was a monoleo from Waianae. She was the last known monoleo born in Waianae. She was raised by her tutu. And um, beautiful singer, recording artist with Kawaii Kocket. She recorded on uh, one of his albums. A beautiful a soprano voice. Anyway, enough said about her beauty. Let me tell you about her name, Kopanaha. So when she was a child being raised by her tutu, she was taken to what people call Pokai Bay or Pokai Bay. Pokai is the proper name. Uh, po, the night of E. I can go on that for hours. But if you look from where uh, the beginning of a place called um, uh, Omalaya or Malaya, which is closer to the rest camp side today, you look across, you see the hail, Ku Iliolua hail. As a child, it's about the early evening, her tutu took her to the beach. She sat there, looked across, and she saw Ku Iliolua. She saw the dog. And she said the dog was not a dog. It was bigger. It was the um, kupua, the mo'o, that lived at Kuilio Loa Kane Ilio Point. And um, Kuilio Loa, she said, not knowing the name as a child of that, of that dog, she said she looked across and she saw a tall dog. She said it had to be more than six feet sitting in, in a very dog sitting way, six feet tall or higher, and, and straight back. And she looked at it. And she said, Tutu, we go home now. We need to go home. They took her home. She said, I was taught never to talk about these things at night. So the next morning, she says, Tutu, I got to tell you something I saw. She said, I saw the dog, the dog for the point. It, and she described it exactly. And her Tutu said, Kupanaha oi. And from then on, she was referred to as Kupanaha, which we know to mean Kupayanaha, astonishing. So that, that, that came, became a name for her that was given to her even after birth. And because of happenings, we can receive names after birth. And anyway, continuing on. Ah, uh, so here's my aunt, um, Auntie Emma uh, Farden Sharp was the number five child born to the Farden family. She also was born in Pukoli'i, Lahaina, Maui, on September 16, 1904. So. Auntie Emma, as a very young girl, and you know, I could do a whole lay on just on Auntie Emma and her hula. She took hula from the woman at the left. And I put her picture here because this is the only known picture of, of this woman. And, and I want to give credit to her. Um, Auntie Emma learned from this woman, Kauhailikua. Her name was Rebecca Kauhailikua Opunui. And she was a kahu at the time, and she, ref she did not teach anymore. But Auntie Emma at age 15 or, or before, there's some conflict in some of her interviews when she's, she went. Uh, in 1919, she was 15. And she said that's, she was 15 when she went to Tutu Kau, Kauhai. Um, she asked her three times to teach her and she refused twice. It was the third time. But that's not the purpose of my story. There's so much to it. After her Ailolo, she had an Ailolo and a Paina. Um, she was... 18 years old, about 18 or before her 18th birthday. Um, Tutu Kauhai said, I have no more to teach you. So she has this performance. When it was done, Auntie Emma started teaching. She got a professional degree as a teacher. And then little, you know, a little later, she started teaching hula formally. So she was teaching hula right away, but not formally. Then she, because she, Tutu Kauhai said, give your first dollar to God. She did. You know, she started to teach professionally. And as she's starting to teach in the 1920s, she decides to have her first uniki. And in this one case, it was more of a hoike. <clears throat> so she's having this uniki <clears throat> performance. She acknowledges her teacher who's there. She invites her to watch her students. So Tutu Kauhai comes down to tell her, beautiful Emma, I'm, I'm proud of you, what you've done, etc." cetera. Uh, the next day though, I guess because it was nighttime, this thing about don't talk about certain things that night, I, I'm, I just want to learn more about. So Tutu Kauhai comes back to Auntie Emma the next morning. And by the way, the story I have, I'm so thankful because my cousin Pakala recorded her in 1984, I believe. 
and she's telling this story herself. So this is from her own mouth that now I'm relaying to you folks. Um, the, and yeah, Emma was born with the name Emma Farden Sharp. That's Emma Farden. That's it. She married David Sharp. So after this presentation, she honors her kumu. Tutu Kauhai comes to the next morning. She said, Emma, I want to tell you um, how happy I am with your work. Last night, um, when I, or yesterday, when I, when I was at this performance, there was a rainbow beyond you in the back, background. It was very defining, and it made me understand. I'm, so she gave her the name Kapi Olani, this P.O. talking about that arch. And she gave her the name to tell her that what, my, what her interpretation is, the kauna behind it is, no one will ever step over your head. No one will ever step on your head. And those of you who understand the mores of Hawaiian culture, our head is sacred. It's not to be disrespected. We don't hit children in the head. That's why people do not hit the heke of the ipu, the top. No excuses. Oh, I have a hard time bending down. No, no. Our kupuna would not have done that. And there I go. Sorry, that's another lea nui nui. Okay, <laughs> Auntie Emma. So she took on that name as her legal name. Again, Ho Ailona. There's an example from my Ohana. Okay. All right. Now, here's some family names on my grandmother's side, the Silvas. And um, I'm just going to touch briefly on them. I just want to tell you their names. When we call out the names, we give them mana. It's, oh, I feel like it's like them hearing us from heaven. Ah, oh, they're thinking of me. That's why we go to visit the graves, right? We call out their name. We pull a mahalo kiakua for their life. And, we, you know, it's saying kiakua, thank you for the gift of kupuna. So Mariah Desdemona Kanihia Umoi Espinda Silva. I will tell you about Kanihia Umoi in, in the next slide. Henry Curtis Kulekana Silva. That was my uncle. And notice he's junior. So that tells you his whole name is Inoa Kupuna. Frank Ho'olulahui Silva. Ho'olulahui is a dream name. I will tell you about that. Ellen Kilipohe Silva Chalk. We know the word Kilipohe to be Kilipohe, like the sparkling rain. Um, I looked in the oldest newspapers, and most of them still spell Tutu Ellen. This is, um, remember last week I told you about all these aunties and uncles, and then I couldn't tell which one is the one generation up. This is the line I was telling you about. <laughs> anyway, most of them do call her Kilipohi, even in the Hawaii newspapers, rather than Kilipohe. So I'm just going to accept it as an alternate translation or form of the word Kilipohe. Um, my grandmother, Harriet Kahelemo Ala Ala Silva Farden, and I will talk about her name. Annie Kekumokalani Kekaulike Silva, that's a beautiful name. I had to use it once in my family as a punny for a child. And hopefully I get to tell you about that. And Sentanala was her married name. And then my auntie Maureen, Kaihule Lani Brown, Alo, and the last auntie, Lorna Kelevaivai Ole Nani Brown Ariola. And there's another punny in the name in the yellow Nani. Okay, going on. Here's my big tutu. My great great grandmother, my paternal grandmother's mother, big tutu, Mary Mikala. She was born um, Baker. Baker and, um, well, no, I'm, I'm sorry, she was born um, a Hauki, but her mother died. And so she was hanai <clears throat> by her mother's sister, Baker, Utukahuhu and John Baker. And um, then she married Grandpa Silva, and he passed away. And then she married Reverend John Mina Mina Brown. So this is whom I call affectionately Big Tutu, because I had my tutu, and then there is Big Tutu. So you'll just need to know that when I'm telling the stories. <clears throat> this is her first child on the right side, Mariah Desdemona Kanihia Moy. This is, of course, a youth picture. I'm so privileged to have this locket. On the left is her grandmother. Um, on her other side, the Espinda side, and this is Tutu Mariah. Espinda, so she can tell Auntie Mariah got her name Mariah from her. Why this is important? Because I, for me, I have all of Tutu Mariah's quilts to this day. And we're talking 1800s, early 1900s. So I really want to honor Tutu Mariah, even though she's not related to me because I'm not related to Auntie Mariah on that side. I'm related on her other side. I wanted to talk about the name Kanihia Moi, which means to literally 
to sneak, to crawl, to creep in the early mornings. Just to be very blunt and quickly, because I don't have a lot of time. When my big tutu was young, she was dating a boy from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Last name is Spinda. She was home in Lahaina. And um, when big tutu, I guess, you know, she had this boyfriend, he would come home. And um, what happened one night, she got, I don't know if punished, but she was told by her, Hanai, her aunt, who was her mother now, stay home. You cannot go out. And she was upset. Uh, she wanted to see her boyfriend. Uh, this is a story my grandmother told me. So maybe there's other versions of it. And it's personal to me again. So I wanted to let you know that. So Grandma Tutu, Big Tutu, <clears throat> at night snuck out. She lifted the, the window up and she went outside. And I used to tell folks oh, that she got caught. But not caught by, by Super Big Tutu. She got caught because she got hapai. So when baby came, Super Big Tutu, which I wouldn't have called her that. I'm just jokingly saying that. But Tutu Kahuhu told her, you're going to name this baby Kanihia Moi. And, and my big tutu was not happy with that name. She said, no, I don't want to name this. <laughs> she said, you will. Because every time this child's name is called Kanihia Moi, it's going to remind you what you did to get Hapai. Mm. But it wasn't about being punished because she was Hapai. It just reminded, it would remind her. Like I told you the story, Hello Kane, last week. So this is a point, and again, this is my personal family sharing this with you all. Um, I probably, you know, I don't think I would name my, any one of my family members that, although it would be an option because it's my, my Auntie Mariah. And by the way, my Auntie Mariah um, loved this name. She was so proud of my name, that this name, that when, when my grandmother had this conversation with her, she said, Mariah, you know what the name such was? I'm not, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to take the beautiful part of it. It's a beautiful name, period. And that was it, you know? So, Auntie Mariah was born in 1908. That's Tutu Mariah, Espinda, and Auntie Mariah um, Silva Jones. Espinda Silva Jones. Ah, this is one of my closest uncles. You know, I got to tell you something. All of my grand uncles and aunties, sometimes, you know, I pretend they're my own grandparents, and they all treated me this way. I tell you that. They made me feel like they're my own grandparents. So I had the privilege of having 20 somewhat grandparents. They treated me this way. The kind where they give you money, like their grand, you know, that kind of way, or they embraced you. Um, when they died, I cried like they were my own grandparents, weeped for them um, and loved them, you know. And uh, like I said, tears come to my eyes when I see them, I think about them because of my love for them. So I wanted to tell you about Uncle Frank, um, and he lived to the good age of 96, I think it was. Um, Uncle Fululahui, when when Tutu was hapai with, um, by the way, Henry was Grandpa Silva, so he was, the firstborn son was named after Henry, Grandpa Silva's brother. Next boy comes out, is Frank, well, he's... Also Frank. So that's how he gets the name, Frank, you know, Kupona. But instead of taking on the whole name, Big Tutu had, was sitting under a mango tree one afternoon and um, I guess eating mangoes. And her mother approached her and her mother had passed away already. And she said, you're going to name the baby Ho'olulahui. And she said, she's kind of stunned, mom, you, you know, you're not supposed to be here. You're gone. And she said, you're, I don't know if she said you're Hapai, but she said, you're going to name the baby and then, my, then Big Tutu woke up. She didn't realize she'd fallen asleep in the afternoon. So she's stunned because the dream told her she was hapai and that she was to name this child Ho'olulahui. In Hawaiian, you're told to give a name. You have to do it or the child could get sick. That's the belief. So when Uncle Frank was born, he was named Frank Ho'olulahui Silva. And he used to kids. He had three children. Mary Bud, we call her Auntie Budgie, Auntie June, June Kalepa, and uh, Frank, he's not junior, um, <clears throat> his name is Wilbur, um, and um, we call him Uncle Son, because he's the son. Well, anyway, um, the three of them were three, so he said, 
why did I get this name, Ho'onulahui, when I didn't have a lot of children? And I quickly told him, I said, Uncle Frank, because we're talking about names and stuff. I said, Uncle Frank, you are going to live a longer time, because he was already old. I mean, he was in his 80s when we were talking about this. And you're going to see generations of your family. You're going to see Allahui. And sure enough, he lived to see great, great grandchildren. Several descendants he lived to see. He and his wife were married for 70 years. What a blessing. Wow. His wife, my Auntie Adelaide Silva, died at 101 just uh, five years ago. So uh, four years ago, sorry. But anyway, the beauty of the name that didn't say, oh, you're going to have plenty of children. Yeah. Raise your own nation. Beautiful name. And it's carried down by some of his mo'opuna. Uh, this, these are my kahuhanai, my grandparents who raised me, my father's parents. So my mother dies at age four. My grandfather on my OED side said, I was going to bring you home to me. And I would have been raised from my Japanese German side. But I guess, I'm guessing my grandparents on the Farden side snatched me first. And my grandfather told me just the other day we were talking about, it, he goes, I was happy that you went there. So I didn't put up a fight. I knew you would be taken care of. And, and you know, maybe I wouldn't have been exposed to all the things I am for that. And, and my grandfather acknowledged that. <clears throat> my grandfather, Oide. <clears throat> so my grandparents were married for 68 years before grandpa left us. Grandpa's name is Rudolph Godfrey Halakala Farden Sr. I always ask you to ask, ask, ask. Here's a good reason. I never knew my grandfather's name was Godfrey. It was his baptismal name, supposedly, he said. When after I interviewed him, my grandparents had been married for about 60 years. I ran to my grandmother, Tutu, and said, did you know your husband's name is Godfrey? She didn't even know. She was married to him. So you got to ask those questions. What is your full name? How did you get it? When you ask your kupuna, how did you get it? Who named it? What is your interpretation? Why Rudolph? Why with the PH and not the F? All of those questions you have to ask. Yeah. So you. And Haleakala was named by his first cousin, which he called his auntie, Lucy Allen. And uh, she named him um, Haleakala, and of course for Maui. And because she named him, she, he became her punahele. She used to come to the fire station when he was a fire officer just to look at him because that was her, she named him. See how our kupon are beautiful. So I'm going to jump to my grandmother, Harriet Kahelemo Ala Ala Silva. I'm going to quickly say that there were a lot of deaths in my family two deaths specifically, of women who carry the name Kahele. So at a certain point, they okied the name, never to use the name Kahele in my family. Again, Malia, your family could use it. That's up to you folks. But my family, it has been okied. Why? Because they, these women were giving birth and dying or died at a very young age. So my kupuna felt unsafe, don't name. So what, did, what they did was when Big Tutu got papai with my grandmother, 1916, um, Uncle Hailama, there's the case in point connection to me, said, Tita, the Porgi, which was her husband, Silva, it's Hawaiian too, by the way, he was in ever playing baseball. He played professionally for the Lahaina Plantation and, and Eva, and he was in Eva. Um, so Grandpa Silva was away, and Uncle Hailama said, the Porgi naming all the kids after his name, Henry, Frank, Ellen, and, and then Annie. The next one was two cop. I'm sorry, Henry, Frank, Ellen. The next one was Irene. And she used to say, oh, thank God I'm not named Irene, or else they would be singing the song, Irene Goodnight, which was popular at the time my grandmother was young. Well, anyway, so they named her Harriet after the tutu who gave birth to my great-grandmother, to, to, to big tutu, Harriet Hauke. And then added her name, Kahele. Oh, the family was in uproar. You cannot name this child Kahele. We okay this name. And, you know, Big Tutu was just humble. She sat in between this tennis match of the family battling. So what he did was he took another family name, Mo'ala Ala, and stuck it to Kahele and made a punny. In essence, he created Inoa Kuamuamu, which meant to go around scavenging like the Mo'ala crab. That's what the name Hele Mo'ala means. Kahele Mo'ala Ala. My grandmother fervently said her name meant, wherever I go, you see, Hele, I give, I leave fragrance, Allah. 
you know, because of my tutu, I said, uh-uh. <laughs> it literally means to go around <laughs> and, and, and scavenge food. My grandmother never did that. She never took Ziploc bags everywhere she went. Um, but I told her that name, you have a punny. That's fabulous, a punny, to put there to seal the deal. I will tell you quickly, my grandmother gave birth to her first child. I'm sorry, she did not give birth to the first child. The first child died within her. She, she actually contracted tetanus and almost died. They had to remove the child. Second child, same complications. I had to remove the child. Third child was my father. She said, if I cannot provide a child, I might as well die with the baby. And so she refused to, to do anything. And then my father was born. And so he was named, you know, him, he was born after. And so my grandmother thinks, this is her interpretation, that because she had the term kahele in her family, she had a difficult time with birth and almost died. But because of Mo'ala Allah, the punny, she didn't know the word punny, but I explained that to her. She was saved. So that was an important story to tell you. All right. Here's some Inuma poll that have come to me. And I don't have to get into detail. Kanani huwa kani lehua o hilohana kahi. I was sitting with my, at that time, girlfriend, probably in like 1996 or whatever, on the beach in my dream. This was Elena, now my wife, but at that time, my girlfriend. Um, I had a dream that I was sitting and pointed to a girl on the beach. A hand came right over my head like this and pointed down and said, that is kanani kaua kani lehua o hilo hanakahi. And I never forgot that. And I looked at that child, and that was my child. And yet, I was like, that's not my child. It was almost like I didn't um, help to conceive that child. So I want to let you know that this name is still floating. It doesn't have an owner yet. Uh, uh, I had a dream. And the dream was I, I was standing on a pier, and the ship turned over once. Turned over again. Twice, turned over a third time. When I woke up, I heard kaho o kahulimoku. And I realized uh, that I was asked to give this boy a name. And that's the dream I had that night. So I gave the name. Interesting, they were living in California at that time. So when I sent over the word, a kahako became a you. So they legally named the child kaho o kahulimoku. And then I saw the legal name, I was like, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> but you know what? I also shared with her, you got to be careful. Because when you look at the meaning of this name, it means to turn over the boat. But that's not the name of this child. The meaning of this child is to right the ship. You see, the ship turned and then turned back up to the front. It turned upside down again and turned back up. And it did it three times, once upside down. And each time it turned back up and righted itself. So I named this child after the writing of the ship. Mm. So the mana of this name is that child will go into chaos, a chaos, chaotic situation, and be able to write that situation. But you have to teach him that kauna, because if you don't, he will cause the ship to turn over. Mm. So you have to instill as a child. That's the importance of this name. So when it came across incorrectly, because in those days, way back then, kahakos came out weird, you know, on computer, yeah, on email, the new, newer days of email. Uh, I told her, you know, wait on it. Go change it legally when the child is older. Then they can take on the full responsibility of the name. All right. Kapa mali ikunui. Why this is important? I was asked by a person to give a name to a child. Granddaughter was on her way. So I had a dream. I saw these beautiful royal palms standing stately. And I was like, this is the name. I didn't hear the name. I was told, this is the name. And I woke up. And I realized right away came to me, Kapama, Kapama Li'iku Nui, the royal palm that stands majestically. As an ula, ula, ula leo, I was told that after I woke up. And then I called the woman, or I emailed the woman that night. Here is your granddaughter's name. It came to me. Her response to me was, wait, I didn't come up with my vision yet. I was going to give you my vision in English. And then you, tell, you interpret that. Oh, I want to tell you, I was so hurt. And so upset. Hey, when a gift comes like that and a name Inopo, I was taught you gotta give that Inopo for the protection. So I tried to, I tried to tell her, but she still didn't use the name. But I figure one day, when that child is older, that child's gonna come see me for something. And I'm gonna say, You're like my tutu did, 
your name is supposed to be Kapamali Ikunui. So that name is waiting for that girl. She goes up. She's probably about, I want to say 10 years old now. So maybe another eight years, she might come find me. Ha'aheo ho ikalehua and ha'aheo ho ikalehua came to me in a dream. I kind of get into the detail because of time, but it's a beautiful story where I was asked to name two babies, one of which is my nephew. When the name came to me, I heard the voice, Auntie Napua, I'm just going to say it's her, telling me as I'm looking in the rear view mirror, I didn't see her, but I heard her voice. Say, you will name the child Ha'aheo ho'i. Kalehua, I'm sorry, Aheo ho ikalehua. And I said to the voice, no, Aheo ho ikalehu. And then I was so puzzled. I went, which child is this for? There's two of them that I've asked. I went to Lenoi Kahanui. I said, first impression. She goes, okay. I told her on the phone with the story. She said, you got both names. The first name you asked, and because in the dream I said, is this for the blank family name or is this for my nephew? She said, the first one gets Aheo ho ikalehua. The second one gets ha'aheo ho ikalei lehua. By the way, I understood that the lehua was from Kauai. Both families have Kauai connection. It was a Kauai lehua. And I will also tell you that my cousin, who is the mother of this son's name is Kalei. So when Lilinoi told me, the second one goes to your nephew, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that. Kalei is right in there. That you are the pride of the lei lehua. Mm. And the other one is you are pride, the pride of the lehua. All right. Kaonohi. Okala Olinolino was an ulale. I was waking up right before Dr. Michael Chun retired. And I heard Auntie Napua, this time I saw her face. Just as I'm waking up, I saw her and she said, Oh, I was almost in tears. I immediately emailed Dr. Chun to ask him if I could be so rude to give him a name at his age. He's not a child. He, to me, I see him as superior to me. Can I give you? Boy, he responded so glad. He said, I was so close to Auntie Napu. I think we're family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He said, yes, I accept this name. So the Kamehameha students and with the help of teachers composed the Melinoa. And we, we, you can see that right there. All of the students behind him, he's wearing a lei that was created called Kaonohio Kalao Linolino. The students of the whole student body chanted that chant, Inoa Melino for him. And he was presented his name officially in front of the whole student body. Um, one of the more important dream names that I'm, I'm not going to skip is Kamake'e Aumoku. I want to share with you that a kupuna that was very dear to me, and especially her granddaughter, who was my dear, dear friend, said to me, my grandmother is passing away, but she's not passing away really, but well, I guess she's passing away and feeding. And she said, um, oh, here's my little one. <laughs> I will, uh, yeah. she said, um, you know, may say some pule or whatever. That night I dreamt I was in the governor's uh, office and she ran to the door, this friend of mine, and said, oh, don't forget grandma's name. Um, by the way, she doesn't call her grandma, but I'm using that for generic. Grandma's name. Her name is Kamake'e Aumoku. And you remember how, know how particular she was. So in the morning I called her and grandma is now in hospice care fading. And I called her and I said, Grandma has a name, yeah? And she said, well, she uses this, but she really doesn't have it. I said, you know, I had this dream. I told her about it. I said, you know what? Go whisper this name into Grandma's ear. And maybe it'll allow her to go. That's why I call it an inuamake. And, um, and so Grandma passed away. So what I didn't realize, I was telling this story two years, three years to my students when I was talking about Inoa. But I just, I almost died of, of excitement one day when I mispronounced the name rather than uh, Kamake'e Aumoku. I pronounced it Kamake'e Aumoku. See, Grandma's husband was a mo'opuna of Ke'e Aumoku. And although they were married, they were having some difficulty before, before Grandpa passed away. And maybe, you know, for personal family reasons. And I felt after a while, I realized... Grandma needed to reconnect to Grandpa's genealogy. And so that's name, this name that would take her with her, linked her to Ke'eo Muku. I, I mean, I tell you about the biggest chicken skin you could ever have. And when I call, I'm crying. I call my friend. I tell her she's crying on the phone and realizing this has got to be what it was. Two years after Grandma died, did we realize the purpose? I cannot tell you anymore about Inopo. Got to move on. <laughs> I want 
you know, about this beautiful woman. Get this book if you can find it about Tutu Emma Kauhi. Um, but anyway, Kaumu Ali'i, our Ali'i names. Kaumu Ali'i is so sacred. Um is the Imu that was up above ground where we put religiously our Ali'i in to separate the Pella, Kapu, the sacred flaps of skin. Um, and then prepared the bones. And, and so that's sacred, that name Kaumu, Kaumu Ali'i. Now, Pella, and I'm dividing these names again so you can see. Don't do this, okay? Um, I think Ruling Chiefs does this too, Kaumu Ali. Now, Pella Kapu o Kaka'e, talking about those flaps of skin, I told you, that sacredness, that were placed up in Kaka'e above Iao. And this is also a rank of folks carried in Kapi'olani's lineage, Queen Kapi'olani's lineage, sacred skin, or, or not, not skin, but, you know, meat, flesh, that was taken up to Kaka'e. Um, Kuhio, I, you know, Malia knows this story, Hawaiian Civic Club. Um, when I asked Prince Quinton Kuhio Kavana Nakoa, why, why would they name Kuhio? Because Hio means to slant. And he goes, no, no, no. Our interpretation is to stand and lean forward. So you can anticipate that which is coming. Beautiful. Another name from that family, Vahihi Kahu'ula, Vahihi Kahu'ula, to be wrapped by the Ahu'ula. That was Princess Abigail. Of course, her Mo'opuna, who's her legal daughter, our living Princess Abigail, Bahikahula, Kinoiki Ke Kaulike of Ananakoa. And then there's Tutu Kauhi, Emma, Martha. Look at, look at these names, how they almost repeat themselves. All came in, um, in dreams or, or actions that had come. Kapu nohu ulokalani, kaohai ulokalani, ka Sorry, Kaonohi Ulokolani, Kaohai Ulokolani, Stone Kauhi. Again, I said, go read the book that was written. I hope you can find it. Um, but, you know, I don't have time to get into all of these. I'll just share. This is my niece. This is a long time ago. But when she's born, she's 14, 15 now. She'll be 15, I think, this year, next month. Um, when she was born, all of the coconut trees at Pua Mana had to be cut down because of their age. And as you know, my family, they planted coconut trees. Each sibling did. And they were told, as these trees grow, so will you. Only one sibling was still alive, I believe, when the trees finally were cut. No, two siblings were still alive. The youngest, two. Um, oh, three. My grandfather was still alive, too. Um, at any rate, when, when Namahina Kawabata was born, this is my, um, my cousin Hola Omoku's granddaughter. Um, I asked if we could name her to remember that at her birth, at the time of her birth, these coconut trees were cut down. So I asked that she be given over 100 years of life so that for those 100 years, she could continue telling the story about these coconut trees, which were her kupuna, our kupuna, and would always tell them even though the trees are no longer there. Um, here, baby, come. Hosanna, come, look. Here's your picture. See, baby? So this is my Hosanna today. So we named her Hosanna Nui Yayasu. This is a baby picture of her with the Lao Eva or Eva Eva. Her name Hosanna Nui Yayasu. And so Ellen and I were a little older when we had her. Probably not supposed to have any keiki, but Keoko blessed us. So her first name praises God, praising Jesus, Hosanna Nui Yayasu. So that every time she's called Hosanna, others are helping us praise Keokua for her blessing. Mm. No, as a family taupo name. We went to Samoa in 2015 and asked my wife's oldest uncle, and he gave her this name. And then Hayano was my mother's Japanese name and her grandmother's name. So it skips a generation. My great grandmother, my, gra my mother, and my daughter have the name Hayano. Uh, Genevieve Sistine. Genevieve is one of her godmothers. Sistine, because my wife. Believe it or not, loves the Sistine Chapel. So just because she liked it, she used it. Ah, oh, broke a couple there. <laughs> Kwai Fa was Sarah Kiahi's Hawaiian, uh, Chinese name. It is her, I should say, her name. And she's my Hanai mother. So I asked to give her because my baby is Chinese too. So she gave her name. This is Totutu's name, Kwai Fa, which is the beautiful small Chinese flower. Kalau Iva Iva, Kalau, uh, Kalau, uh, Robbins is one of her godmothers. So <clears throat> we add Kalau Eva Eva to remember uh, Kalau. And this Eva Eva plant was around us so much. 
in the birthing of Hosanna. So I have to put that in. Kiawapali o haupu lani. Haupu is Melepeng, her godfather. Mm. Lani refers to Kalani Solar. Is not her godfather, but just as close. You know, I stuck to the traditional one godfather, but Elena picked two godmothers. <laughs> and then Beautiful Kauai is a song my father wrote. So I put it in there because that connects to him since I had my, grand, my mother above. So Kalau Iva Iva O Kialo Pali O Haupu Lani O Beautiful Kauai. Don't name your child these long names. I just did. <laughs> of course, Inoa Kupuna. Um, I want, I'm almost done, just so you know. No, I know. No problem, no problem. <laughs> Um, this is so um, important to remember. Sometimes Ho'oponopono plays a role um, in names. All right, so Oki and Pani. Um, I talked to you a little bit about Pani, names that are given to add. I gave you a list of my kupuna name. I had my grandmother who was, kid, um, was Kahele, Mo'ala, Kahele and Mo'ala Ala put together. Um, her youngest sister is Lorna I always wonder why her name is just Nani by itself. We call her Auntie Nani. But I didn't know until I looked at either her birth certificate or something that it was together. Kili Vai Vai Ole was one of our tutus. And tutu Kili Vai Vai Ole, um, I believe, because her father was Reverend John Mina Mina Brown, that she was put there, it was put there as a pani. Because Kili Vai Vai Ole, even though Zino Kupuna, to protect her, he attached Nani. So when I looked at her legal name was Kili Vai Vai Ole Nani. And ah, that makes sense. And um, then I'll quickly tell you about my Auntie Annie, Ikumukulani um, Kikaulike, Sentinella, Silva Sentinella. So many years uh, later, and Auntie Annie died in 1980, about 2012 13, a baby from my Auntie Ellen Kilipohi's line was born. This would be a great, great maybe great grandchild. The child was born, I believe, three months premature. Very close to not being able to stay on. I was called to the hospital to bless baby. I blessed baby. I went home, prayed, and I asked the living daughter, the only living daughter at that time of my Auntie Annie, I want to give your mama's name to this baby of Auntie Ellen's line. Because your, your mother's name, which was a Ninoa Kupuna from another, Kekumo Kalani Kekaulike means the firmament of heaven in balance. Or you could say the firmament of chiefs in balance. I said, this baby needs this name. So I, she said, yes, go ahead. So I went, again, my family name, but I still wouldn't go ask the line. I gave the name. I said, please give this baby this name. Because that way, this, this, this name is going to help all of this child, which it did. You know, mahalo I want to talk about Prince Edward Kiliaho Nui Kavana Nakua. So I joined Haleo Nali Uhovaya. I was 18, just made 18. And I remember the old folks talking about this prince who I got to meet as a young child, as a young adult. And Prince Edward, um, I remember the tutus telling me, oh, he had another name, but he was sick. And so the kupuna came and they got together and they ho'oponopono and they realized it was the name. So they changed his name. And it stuck in my head and I never knew. I asked, nobody knew. I went, my goodness, and looked and it was in the records, in the minutes of our ahahui at his birth. He was born the name Edward Hulumealani Kavananako. And it's important to know that that's not his name anymore it was Oki. That's important to know. But I'm using it for this sharing. Ulumealani is an Ali'i name. But I guess the kupun at that time said it's not fitting for him. So they removed the name and added Kili'i Ahunu, which is his uncle's name. But it also talks about the chief with great patience. Or some might say with great breath, which we all know is so important to us. Boy, if you ever knew Prince Edward, one of the most humblest of Ali'i. Generous, sweet man, beloved. And here's a picture of him in very young age at Bishop Museum wearing the mahi ole and the ahu of Kaumuali, his great, great, his great, great grandfather, Kaumuali. Okay, I had to put this up. Folks, they're saying call out George Floyd and 
We call out his name so it's not forgotten. That's so poignant for us. Um, calling out names, I talked to you at the beginning of today, honors the kupuna, lets them know we're thinking about them by calling their names. It's almost an unihi pili in some cases, you know, um, where you're, we, we do this in Christianity. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Think about that. Even in Christianity, it's powerful. You go read the book of Genesis. It's beautifully written about Enoa. And I tell you, some of the mores are almost exactly like Hawaiians. But let's talk about a little bit about racism in Enoa. There's so much. There's so much. Um, you know, folks, folks still feel it's a colonial mind. I have to name my child an English name as a first name. You do not have to. You do not have to. Unfortunately, it was really a Hawaiian who created that law, it was Kamehameha IV, who made a law that said we all had to have English names. And I've met three people who broke the law. Their first names were always from birth in a Hawaiian name. Um, and it really was an effort to get them to have Christian names to be baptized and have. That was really the effort. So the, the feeling was to, to help save the people. But people still feel that they have to do that. You don't have to. Some people even feel you only can have three names. No, you saw my daughter's name. Okay, more than that. One thing that stuck out this morning as I'm thinking about this, or last night, I, 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 I was looking, working at this about two in the morning. I was thinking, you know, I was, I'm so insulted. When the queen was standing trial, she's facing her traitors. They refused to address her as her majesty or, her, or queen. Of course not, because insults, right? But the fact that they continued to call her Mrs. Dominus, they added show you by adding a, a kahako on Mrs. Dominus, almost attaching her to her husband's name, denying her any humanity of the dignified, humble, not just Ali, but woman she was. Mm. You know, today people are forgetting. Oh, why should I call the Kawananakoas Ali? You know why? Because our kupuna did. Because our ali'i are no longer ali'i if our people stop calling them by their ranks. It was the Westerners that came here because of the English connection before when they said, no more kings, no more ranks. They applied that to us immediately in 1893. And yes, even though the last person who legally carried the title princess <coughs> was Abigail Kavananakoa. Mm. It's because Western law says that, folks. There are a lot of Ali'i lines. We need to understand that and respect that. So I tell you that because every time we don't perpetuate that, you might call Kuhio. Now I do it affectionately because I feel like I work for him, but I really, in public, I should say Prince Kuhio or Kamali Ikane or something like that. Got to honor these Ali'i. Um, anyway, that's enough said. I can talk a long, a long time about this. A colonialization of names, the personal names. You know, when my great-grandfather's father was born, John Mina Mina Brown, his name was Mina Mina. And because the school people didn't want it, they named him, no, your name is John Brown. They just labeled him John Brown. Go read American history about John Brown. They named him John Brown versus Mina Mina, valued. So that has happened to many names, folks. I bet a lot of you in your families have names like this. Um, Inoa Aina. Today we talk about the colonized vision of taking names and changing them. Um, Lanikai is a great example. Kauhau. And you know, I've been reading Facebook things and people are just hallowing these names of wrong, saying this is what the correct name is. Correct, you are correct. The one thing I wanna share with you is Pearl City is not necessarily wrong. You see in, the, in Kalakawa's time, King Kalakawa's time, what he did was he held a contest to name this new development, this area. And the winner of the contest was Pro City under his allowance. Mm. So I don't necessarily frown at it. Besides, it was made of manana and other areas that were all part of it, uh, Malu and different parts. But just so you know, I'm not against Pro City. <laughs> but there are other places that we need to start talking about. We need to use it. Even if you want to still honor Pearl City, know your district. Whether it is Manana, no, I live in Manana, Pearl City, or something like that. Mm. I, was, I work for Kamehameha. We talk about Kona Oahu. We call it out now. Call out the names where you're from. 
Just like I said, when you introduce yourself, don't just say, Hi Lama is my name. My name is Hi Lama Fardin. Because that is your picture. That is your map. It tells who you are. Today, citizens are demanding that military bases be renamed. You all hear this in the news. Well, is there a Hawaiian connection to this? Absolutely. Absolutely. You think about Thurston Street, folks. I'm sorry if you related it to Thurston. I have to just speak without me making any judgment. Go read the stories about what was done during the overthrow period. Now, you know, in their mind, people say today, oh, lucky they did this for us. Why? Well, that's what we were told to think and believe. Folks, we were even a more advanced nation prior to the overthrow. When 40,000 of our kupuna sign that they do not want to be um, a part of the United States, and that was ignored in Congress, in 1898, when they're debating, what are we going to do? We need Hawaii. Hawaii is not officially theirs yet. It's, it's not a territory yet. It's this republic that was declaring itself under people like Thurston, like Sanford Dole. These names have to be taken back because they dishonored, they insulted our queen. You folks have to understand this. They insulted your kupuna. If you feel uncomfortable with what I'm saying, please go read the, the what is the signature um, uh, document that was filed um, with our kupuna, the protest uh, annexation. Kue. I'm sorry? The Kue. Kue petition. Kue. Go read that. Find your kupuna there and realize that your kupuna was insulted. And then they named places after them and took away our Hawaiian names. You know, so I'm, I'm hurt by that. And they insulted our queen and yet she turned around later on, prayed for forgiveness because she's such a saint she was. She's a beautiful woman. But when you talk about people who thought of us as heathens, thought we were stupid, that told us we had to speak English as of 1896 when we were smarter. We had newspapers, they didn't. We established a board of education in 1840, they didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm brave to say we were more brilliant than the United States of America. And nowhere else in the world was there a perforce more superior in education and wisdom than we were. So the best way to do it was to smash us down in the 1890s. Go read it, folks, it's all there. So in 1898, goes before Congress, we need to get to the Spanish-American War in the Philippines. What do we do? Well, we need the base. So this general by the name of Schofield, I don't know if you've ever heard that name before, and this is congressional record. You can read this in the United States Congress records. He says, Let's just say that Hawaii declared war on us. You see, the, the idea is if, if you declare war in the U.S. and you lose, then they can take your aina with no cons, uh, consolation. They can just take it because you went to war. We never went to war with the U.S. So he says in congressional record, knowing that we would never be able to research it like we can today. And he says, tell them to say that, the, that Hawaii declared war on us and, and, and they lost. They did. They declared us a territory because of the Spanish American War, and then they took over Kapiolani Park and had a fort there, and then we become a territory in the legal eyes of the United States. Well, there's just so much of that, folks. Don't be afraid of our history. It's real, it's real, it's real, it's real. It's not Hailama making this up. I'm not being this radical that's you know yelling down the street. I'm I'm just passionate that. I don't think we've ever been taught. I, I was sitting in a situation where a Hawaiian educated woman said, you know, they talk about these things because they don't know. And I wanted to say, you don't know. You don't know. Got to read. Our queen wrote a beautiful book, Hawaii's Story by Hawaii's Queen. So folks, we have to start addressing these things. You know, consider Dole Street, Dole School. Consider... Um, Thurston Avenue, Thurston Street. Consider these names that insulted our, our kupuna, insulted, and, and they cannot hide it. Think about Waterhouse, when the Hawaiians were, when, he, when somebody had asked in this group of committee of safety, safety, who's safety? Um, should we allow the Hawaiians to vote whether they wanna become a part of the United States or not? His answer literally was, again, go read the history. To give the Hawaiians a vote would be to allow them 
to, uh, to, give, put, to put knives in the hands of babies. That's telling us we're dumb, we're stupid. So maybe it's time for Julio. And we need to call out our names. And even if no one's willing to use it, we should use it and honor our names. Final, final one. Did you know that it was illegal to have a Hawaiian first name up until 1967? Governor Burns signed into law in 1967 that you didn't have to have an English first name anymore. Um, the longest name on record was once a Hawaiian name. It's now a man who died in 19... Well, I don't remember. He was old. He was born in 1914. Um, and I don't think he's... He, um, well, he's not Hawaiian, definitely. But his name, he has one name for every alphabet, uh, every letter in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And his final name is a story. And that one was passed down by his grandfather who named, um, because they were, there was something connected to the anti-Jewish or to protect the Jewish people. So this name tells a story about it. So that's, that I found really beautiful. You can actually Google it and let's find the story, the longest name in the world, look it up. Um, and then a Melinoa is one of the greatest gifts you could give someone to present somebody a Melinoa. And, um, you know, I'm so thankful for my discussions, even with my cousins. And I won't give into, get into their personal names, but my cousin, um, Luana McKenney, Farden McKenney, her niece, my other cousin, Marcy, sharing some personal connection to, you know, beautiful stories. It just got me bubbled up yesterday thinking, my challenge to you all is go find your story about your name. Go find your story about all of your kupuna name. Why? Ask all you can. If you want to ask Malia or I what the translation is, we'll try and help you. But no, that's just one interpretation. And, and you know, allow, allow us that. And then you, you, it's your name. It's your kuleana. It's your most valuable possession. So honor your kupuna, your name giving. And, you know, again, mahalo for the time you allow me to share. I'm sure I'll get emails. Hailamofarden at gmail.com if you have questions. Um, if you want to connect me somewhere else, go try um, but I'm happy to help or we'll speak. I, I've done this on the continental U.S., all throughout Hawaii. Uh, I can go to Aotearoa since there's Aotearoa people there. <laughs> uh, <anywhere else. laughs> mahalo Nui. Hi, mahalo, mahalo. You know, I, I didn't see too many questions, but I did see some comments, and maybe I'll just read two or three of them here. Um, so, you know, on, and most of this is on Facebook where they're, they're sharing a little bit about Ohana names, you know, oh, and yeah. like, uh, one is saying, my mother's name was Harriet, my middle name is Harriet, my great grandmother's name was Harriet. And then, you know, there are other members asking, well, what does Harriet mean? And they're having this conversation. <laughs> oh, <beautiful>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a, a, a nice conversation happening there. And then, um, Lisa had mentioned that that dream state is wonderful, you know, when you were talking about Inoa Po and Inoa uh, Moi Uhane. Um, let's see. Oh, and Aiai says, Mahalo Nui e hai lama for sharing so many personal mo'olelo. Mahalo. Um, I'll go read the Facebook comments after. I can still see it. Yeah. After. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. so you'll be able to see them. And then the last one, um, Kaliko Baker um, commented and said, Nui ki akamai o hai lama, ha ha imaila ikanaawao, e vaiho my name, mana inoa kupuna, mahalo nui. Ay, ole, mahalo. Yeah, so mahalo again, hai lama, for sharing all of these mo'olelo. And oh, I know one question I did see really quickly um, was about... Um, like a name like Ke Aloha Pau Ole and the words Pau and Ole. Yeah. Name. Any, any mana on that? Sure, sure. sure. Well, you know, um, uh, that's something that I used to, Lua Ole is another one. So Pau Ole and Lua Ole. And I used to talk about that because, you know, I told you about the Lua word. You don't want to use Lua because you might end up in a Lua. But the Hawaiians really believe they, they use that Ole as a punny. So the double negative becomes a positive. So Lua Ole, Pau Ole, you know, and even like Ana Ole, Kalani Ana Ole. Ana, it means measure. Ole means without. So I don't know, the Ali'i seem to be safe even ending on some of this um, 
You know, but some might say, oh, but Kalaniana Ole didn't have children. Yeah, but the Kalaniana Ole before did, you know, or something like that. You know, um, I, you don't always have to read into it. Just listen to it and go, yeah, this is probably a kauna. But yes, those are double negatives to, to create the pani to make it positive. Mm. Oh, mahalo nui. So again, um, mahalo for sharing and... You know, you're welcome to come back and join us again. I know there's yeah, so many when are you going to start up again after, after July? Because you're going to do month, monthly or weekly now? Um, yeah, so starting um, next week, we'll be doing only on Fridays. It'll be a weekly. We'll be doing once a week for our Le Anue Nue. And then, you know, and I, I, that's actually a perfect transition into some of my next slides because... And you also, before you go, Malia, can you also remind folks how they can watch afterwards? Because um, I've been getting a lot of questions, although they're probably not watching now, but e e where you can watch the whole presentation, which of the three, is it Facebook, is it YouTube, or is it Zoom, or is it all that you can see? <laughs> great again. question, great question. Um, and I'm going to show that on my next slide coming up. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let us know how we can serve you better by going to our survey which you can find at kanayokana.net slash survey and like i just mentioned a few minutes ago that um starting next week we will be doing um only on fridays um i call it will still be coming on on wednesdays and fridays but let us know is um you know the frequency are you do you like it uh three times a week you would prefer us to stay at that or one week, um, once a week for now, and then maybe when school starts up again, you know, we're, we're trying to find that balance, um, especially knowing that our, our situation keeps uh, changing on, on the regular. So, you know, we're wanting to serve you better. On the survey would be a great place for you to tell us a little bit more, or even in the comments on Facebook, um, we do go and, you know, hello, hello, and read all of that. So please uh, let us know there. Um, so you can also find our schedule at kanayokana.net slash lay. And on there, on this schedule, you'll also be able to go and see all of our past shows and there's links to all of the recordings. So of course the immediate recordings will be available on Facebook. Um, and then we are um, also working on getting them up onto our YouTube channel as well as our Vimeo channel. And again, by going to the schedule, you can find all of the titles, our presenters, the links are all there. So you can go to kanayokana.net slash lay. Um, and then as you can see this week for Lei Anue Nue coming up um, on Thursday, Ka'ano'i as well as Ka'ena will be joining us to talk about pa'u writing, bahine hololio, you know, and we just um, finished uh, honoring Kamehameha on Kamehameha Day. And, you know, a pa'u writing um, was a, or is a big part of that celebration on the different islands. And so I, I invited them to come and talk to us a little bit about that history and just all the mo'olelo that goes into that preparation process. So come back and join um, these two vahine hololio that will be sharing that mo'olelo. And then Kalani Hiapo will be joining us on Friday to talk a little bit about a uh, exciting summer program that he's putting together um, for, for keiki of different ages. So come back and learn more about that. Of course, Aikole. Look at these um, fabulous presenters that will be coming and joining our host, Ekela Kani LP Crozier, on both Wednesday and Friday. And I, I'm sure many of them look very familiar to you. So again, you can go and look at our schedule and find out exactly uh, what time these are happening. And then also um, the links to directly finding the live links as well as the recorded links. So again, mahalo nui loa. Um, follow us both on Kanayokana as well as Hawaii Nuiakea's Facebook and Instagram pages. 
And again, I welcome you back on uh, Wednesday evening as well as Friday for our new webinars that Hawaii Nuya Kea will be hosting. Um, so really exciting times. Um, yeah, so mahalo e hai lama no ko. Hai maolelo, kaana manao me ke aloha. Um, and again, mahalo to each of you for joining us in today's Lea Nue Nue session, our second part of Ola Kainoa. Mahalo, aloha. Yeah.